Everyone and welcome to our Daylighting 3, the park that uh, we have yet to name. At some point we will name this park. Uh, but isn't it beautiful? It's a wonderful accomplishment that the city made just a few years ago. Uh, today we're here to uh, for a very important announcement that we uh, will make our plan public for an action climate. And so uh, I wanted to uh, hold this special event today. Uh, thank Bill Serator. Uh, also, thank some of the people that are here with us today. Everyone playing a very important role. Uh, Tasha Diaz, the Yonkers Council Majority Leader, is with us. Uh, good to see her and the members of the City Council, including uh, Shanae Williams, uh, Bridget Griswold, Executive Director for Groundwork Hudson Valley. Uh, we also, um, good to see Bridget. Uh, we have uh, our Deputy Commissioner, also former. Uh, Sustainability Director Jason Baker is with us. Uh, the Green War the Yonkers Green City Advisory Board, T Terry Joshi, I know is here. Good to see you here, Terry. Uh, the uh, Groundwork Hudson Valley and uh, Burrow Hapold, uh, the consulting firm that helped us put together this plan. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you. Well, last week we witnessed an unprecedented event with poor air quality blanketing Yonkers uh, from the Canadian wildfires. It's a natural effect of climate change that we are all dealing with. And as we are here today to invest in a greener future and do uh, and we'll do our part to strengthen the city's resiliency against climate change. So this comprehensive plan isn't really about us because we all know that uh, this is going to take all of us doing our part for a very long time. It's a matter of us uh, changing the way we do things and doing it permanently. And we're doing it for our children and our grandchildren and for generations beyond that. Our goal is to secure the city's path to zero emissions and to do so by 2050. And it's not that far off, guys. We've already reduced our municipal energy use by 26%. We've reduced oil consumption here by uh, 15%. And in April, we announced the expansion of electric vehicles charging stations with 90 new stations, and it's the largest municipal expansion here in Westchester County. And we're, we aren't done yet. That's right. We now have strategies in place to focus on jobs, <clears throat> the economy, energy, buildings, and waste. In our first year, we will paint all municipal building rooftops white to lower extreme temperatures. We will also continue to encourage recycling and food scrapping, which by the way, uh, we started off this year and it's going so well that we're probably going to have to uh, move it at a more rapid pace because the people seem to like it and want to be a part of it. And so we're going to make sure that we continue to answer that call. Uh, we have equitable, equitable strategies to lower emissions, to keep our city energy efficient, and to lower climate risk for future generations, especially in the hardest hit uh, areas. I'm going to introduce Bill Serator, who is our director of the Office of Sustainability, to explain more about the Yonkers Climate Action Plan Bill. What a great day, huh? So, you know, it's often said that actions speak louder than words. There are a lot of words in this 158-page plan, but today, the city of Yonkers is taking action. So thanks to the leadership of Mayor Spano, Yonkers is not only acting upon the New York State mandates, like zero net zero emissions by 2050, but we are going to lead by example. We're going to take the front seat in this, and we're going to lead the rest of Westchester County, and in some regards New York, to that valley, to that plateau, to that nirvana of net zero. So this plan represents uh, over a year of work from a variety of people from all walks of life. 
Um, I want to thank all the government officials. I want to thank the community uh, partnerships that we have, a number of activists, uh, and most of all, concerned citizens. We held a number of public sessions on nights and weekends to listen, to gather information, to understand the things that the community feels is needed and we married that to everything that we know from an academic standpoint to put together this 25-year roadmap. Now, although this is the 25-year plan and the mayor's already laid out some of the things that we're already doing and there are a few others that we will do, the plan is broken down with short-term, mid-range mid, mid goal and long-range goals that will achieve in that 25-year span of time. And the plan is resilient enough that it can, it can adapt. So today we know what a number of technologies are, and we're doing those. But as new technologies emerge, we're going to be able to adapt and go with those because they will all be in service of meeting the roadmap of this climate initiative. So the five levels of focus which the mayor laid out, jobs and economy, resiliency and environment, transportation, energy and buildings, and waste. And we've laid out a lot of those and there's a lot more that we're going to be doing. Shortly you're going to be hearing this is not just one announcement to announce a roadmap and a plan of what we're going to be doing. There will be multiple announcements that come uh, in service of this. So in short order, you're going to start seeing some new uh, technologies and some new uh, activities that the city is going to be undertaking for recycling, for waste. We'll be, we'll be moving into phase two and phase three of electric vehicles. We've already uh, electrified about 30% of the municipal fleet. That will continue. We, we've ordered an electric vehicle green sanitation truck, which we're expecting to take delivery on later this year. So that's a tip of the iceberg, but the overall goal is to achieve greenhouse gas emissions, reduce energy consumption, make the transportation more efficient, more green, and more uh, user-friendly for everyone. And I'm very happy to announce that the majority of the work of this plan and a lot of these initiatives in the short term range are all going to be right here in Southwest Yonkers, which has long been overlooked and long overdue for a whole lot of climate. So why do we do this? You know, the mayor mentioned last week we got a little bit of a taste of uh, a real, real uh, action uh, in climate. and. For many, that was the first time they heard the acronym of AIQ. And what does that mean? And suddenly now there's a big awareness on what air quality is and what it means. We're doing these things not because they're politically expedient, not because it's a thing to do, not because it serves some other purpose. We do these things because they are real, but most importantly they improve the quality of life our life, your life, the life of your children, your grandchildren, and the future generations of Yonkers citizens. That's why we undertake these things. And that's why I'm proud to be here. And under the leadership of Mayor Spano, who believes in this, we've been able to put this together and get it done. So, lastly, real quick, if you haven't done this yet, you should sign up your residents for the Yonkers Energy Plan. It's currently 8.7 cents on the renewable uh, side of it, and that is a significant discount from Con Edison. We have that plan in place uh, for the rest of the year, and if you haven't done it, you should do it. You'll save yourself a lot of money, and more importantly, you'll be doing your part in this Climate Action Plan because we're all in this together to quote high school musical, but uh, it is truly a village and we are all in this together. Um, 
So please do that. And also, I failed to mention Sustainable Westchester is here as well. They're a big uh, advocate of the city and of the county. And thank you for all you do. And we're going to be doing a lot more work with them. So the city is doing its part. You can help. Together, we can achieve very great, long-lasting things. This plan will be available on the city website. Please download it. I know it's big. Take it in bite-sized pieces. But there's a lot of really great, exciting things in here, some of which is low-hanging fruit that you all can do. The city will be doing its part. We're looking for you to do your part. And together, as I said at the start, we will lead the way in New York for climate action. Thank you very much for attending today. Thank you, Bill. I'm so glad you mentioned the um, uh, Sustainable Westchester because, you know, the city council took the leadership with us when we moved uh, our ratepayers into this consortium. And we know that there was a lot of information out there, a lot of bad information, frankly. and. Uh, as many as 10,000 ratepayers physically picked up uh, and moved out of the program because of bad information costing, actually costing the ratepayer thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars personally. And so, um, uh, but, but we also know that uh, 20,000 of ratepayers stayed in the program. And, uh, and, and we were uh, very, very good in making sure that we established a rate that was um, that, that was locked in and when the prices went spiraled up out of control for Con Ed and for the other escrows, it didn't happen here for the Yonkers residents that so decided to stay in the program. And on top of all that, we were in a recycling number and so we were using uh, energy that, uh, that, had, um, that had that benefit to it. So. Um, and so that was that was something that we did last year and worked out very very successfully and you know that many of those ten thousand ratepayers have actually come back uh, but but then they and I think they went to beat up those who they wanted to beat up those who gave them the bad information but you know we we can't we can't promote that stuff um, you know eating people up so not a good thing uh, but the the Yonkers Environmental and Policy uh, and Protection Committee uh, is. Uh, part of the city council and we have a great leader on the city council she's the majority leader and I know she has a, a lot to say about this program she also uh, in addition to being a majority leader she's also the head of the education committee so she doesn't have a lot of downtime uh, but when she does this is one of these programs we're talking about all the time so here uh, for uh, Tasha Diaz hello hello Good morning, everyone. As the mayor stated, I am environmental chair for the city of Yonkers, and I want to start by saying thank you. Thank you to our mayor. Thank you to the Office of Sustainability and Groundworks. Thank you, Bridget, for always keeping me abreast of what's going on in the community and working together. It's those kind of initiatives that bring the community together to make things like this happen. It's, it, it takes not one person, but it takes a village to make sure that we, we are able to breathe cleaner, serener, fresher air. Um, I am environmental chair, so we have made sure that we changed our fleet over. We've done a lot of different things in the city to lead by example. Um, my building is actually one of the ones that's going to lead in the food scrapping. Another building in my district, 1085, has took the lead on that as well. So that's what it is. It's about coming together as a community and ensuring that we preserve the land that we have for years to come. So thank you for everyone that came out and thank you for all your support. Thank you, Majority Leader. You know, this plan would never come together without the assistance of our partners like Groundwork Hudson Valley. And I'd like to bring up my really good friend and a, uh, just a wonderful person, uh, Bridget Griswold, who is the Executive Director of Groundwork Hudson Valley. To say a few words, Bridget. Thank you, Mayor Spano. Good morning. Um, it is a big day in Yonkers today and an even bigger day for the environment. So it's such a privilege and an honor to be celebrating the release of this plan, uh, the first ever Yonkers Climate Action Plan. I uh, want to also thank our sustainability director, Bill Serator, 
and the amazing consulting group Burr Happold and Star White House who helped us put together this incredible plan. Um, your leadership on this is truly, truly remarkable. Um, there's no denying we're experiencing the serious consequences of climate change, and we've heard from the mayor and from our sustainability director and our majority leader, Tasha Diaz, about the air quality disaster we all experienced last week. Um, we're also looking at other extreme um, impacts of climate change, including more flooding, uh, more extreme heat, and we, this plan addresses all three of those things. So it's, it really is an ambitious plan that is one of the more comprehensive plans I've ever seen in my 20 years of doing environmental work. Um, I wanna thank also the mayor for including Groundwork, Groundwork Cousin Valley's Climate Safe Yonkers Task Force. Members of the task force, please raise your hands. This was over a year of time that over 30 community members, business leaders, and other nonprofits committed uh, to working to advise the city on hyper-local situations that are happening in their neighborhoods and helping to make sure that equity is at the center of this plan. So thank you all for all of your contributions. One of the things I want to say about the task force is that it was comprised of members that represent the most at-risk neighborhoods in our city. And so I think I want to say thank you again to Mayor Spano because by including these recommendations, I just want to say over 38 community recommendations made it into this plan. So Mayor Spano and to everyone involved in the final approval of this plan, I know it was went through City Council and the Green City Advisory Task Force, and as everybody said, this is a program that can only work if we're all in it together. So Mayor Spano, you sent a message to people who have been historically disadvantaged that they are important and that their voices have value in the city of Yonkers. And that is what genuine inclusion and climate justice looks like. So thank you. I see uh, Terry Joshi's here, so I think she has a piece of paper in her hand, so we must have to. Let's give a nice round of applause for Terry Joshi, who promotes us so much in these issues. And, uh, of course, I have to lower the mic. Well, it's, a, it's such a fabulous day that, that the only thing I can come up with a word in Yiddish, which is verklempt, so for the, thank you, some of you know, it just means overwhelmed with emotion, and that's how I feel. So, but I want to talk about the community that has been working so hard behind the scenes, a small community, but um, the Yonkers Green Policy Task Force, which is the original iteration of the current Yonkers Green City Advisory Board, um, was founded in Earth Day 2007 by the City Council at the time, and we worked very hard behind the scenes on many initiatives, including the Greenies, which some of you I'm sure remember. But Mayor Spano, to his credit, took this all-volunteer Community Green Policy Task Force and elevated us into the Yonkers Green City Advisory Committee. And over the years, he has listened and acted on suggestions from YGCAC, many of which have been mentioned today, hybrid and electric vehicles, LED lighting, um, battery-powered equipment for DPW and the Parks Department. Um, and of course, one of the things that came out of YGCAC was the Energy Action Plan, which we've been going under for the last 10 years, which I want to point out that Jason Baker, our former sustainability director, yeah. is here and was in charge of that activity for many years, for which we say thank you. Um, and the Climate Action Plan is really the culmination of a lot of the work done by the community volunteers on YGCAC. Um, we have been pushing for these actions for a long time. Some of it was a little helter-skelter, but now we have this incredible book that the mayor has been holding up. And that is really going to be the cornerstone and the guiding point and the legislative initiatives that we need to continue our move into sustainability, equity for the southwest corner of Yonkers, and the quality of life for all of our residents. So thank you, Mayor Spano. Thank you, Bill Serratori, who has picked up the mantle beautifully as our director. And I'll turn it back over to Mike, and this really is an amazing day. Thank you. Terry, thank you so much. And I see Terry, I think about uh, 
you know, when, when we were kind of leading the fight to eliminate the plastic bags, you look at this park. By the way, this park wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the support of the council could have taken these buildings down and pulling this river from out of the ground and daylighting it and making it beautiful. But uh, we also remember uh, we were taking the lead on the elimination of plastic bags. And Governor Cuomo at the time was so nervous that he ran and did a special order to get New York State to try to pass it before we did. You know? but, but at the end of the day, it was Yonkers that kind of made that all work. And look how much cleaner our parks are today. Think about it. Think about how it was. Now it is today, and we also uh, purchased a three-acre site right on the Yonkers, right in the edge, right down the road a piece, at the end of uh, Ludlow Street, uh, to give the Hudson River back to the kids of Southwest Yonkers, because we're going to have a three-acre park on the waterfront. I promise, all right, Dorchard Spear was here. Dorchard remembers when my father was alive, and back in the 70s and the 80s, when that promise of a park was made to the residents of that community, and it never happened. And under this council, it's happening. And so thank you, Councilman Williams and Tasha Diaz for making that happen. So again, thank you for all being here today. Uh, the Yonkers Climate Plan is now in motion uh, so we can secure our path and set forth towards 2050. So with that, thank you.